Hi there, Oscar from Uteguiden here. Today I will tell you what I normally pack in my ski touring backpack and what's perfect when you're joining us for a guided ski tour here in Norway. So, uh, starting with, uh, I will go back talking a little bit more about the backpack later, but normally we recommend people to have a backpack around 30, 35 liters. If you have a smaller backpack than that, it's really hard to fit all your gear in the backpack and starting out with, you're looking like a Christmas tree with things hanging just all around you. Uh, so 35 at least, that's, uh, that's um, a nice size. And um, yeah, we'll start to just open up the backpack and see what we have here. Of course, um, a bottle for some, some water. If, depending a little bit on the time of the year and the conditions, I can also choose to bring a thermos to have some warmer drinks with me too. Um, right now, I've been actually out ski touring yesterday and this was in, now we're in um, early, early May, which means I just brought water and like, it wasn't especially cold outside. Other than that, around clothing, a warm jacket for, I normally use uh, Prima Loft or sometimes even down jacket. It depends a little bit on which uh, conditions we have. If it's really wet, it's nicer to have a Prima Loft that, or some other, um, fibers that will not um, collect so much water as a um, down jacket. Nowadays you have also down jackets that's more water repellent. This is a really thin one and it's also just because we are in the end of the season. Uh, if I would be um, lay earlier on the season I would probably bring a down jacket like this that's a little bit warmer. Uh, I normally like to have a down jacket that's big enough so I can just take it over my other clothing instead of getting up on the summit and have to rip off all the clothes to put back on it. Other than that, regarding clothing, uh, extra beanie, a warm one, and then I can have a light one or even, I'm actually a big fan of using a cap when I'm out ski touring, even in the middle of the winter. And if you don't have any real uh, sunshine, it's perfect for all of like rain, snow, and uh, protects your, your face and eyes. Warm beanie, extra pair of warm gloves. Uh, I like, these ones because it's a, a finger glove so even if it's thick and warm I can still work with it on and do like if I have to adjust a binding or whatever. It, I mean if you have a, a really warm glove or uh, and then you have to take it off each time to when you have to sort out things then you're gonna get cold on your hands anyway. So warm ones but I mean this will of, sure, of course be like totally individual for yourself and um, you know if you are have really warm hands or cold hands. I have friends that more or less never use gloves. A spare buff like this, perfect to, you can use it for like over the neck, over the head. Um, a couple of days ago I actually used it as a towel for getting rid of a lot of sweat in my, in my face. First aid kit. This is um, not anything I will go through today, what we will have in the first aid kit, but that will be a little bit individual. In general, if you buy a first aid kit that's like packed and ready to go, um, I would recommend you to just have a look in it and see, okay, do I actually need this? Maybe I could put in some new stuff. And it's not always the best things you will find in like the pre-packed pre ones, but at least you get a nice bag for it and then you can fill it up with whatever you want. 
um, bivy bag or wind sack. Um, I use this one from Life System. Um, the reason why I use this one is because it's really easy to, to get the bag really small and then it won't take that much space in my backpack. This one fits for two people. So um, if we have a bigger group, if I have more people with me than two, then we often bring more ones and then we can just spread them out on the group. Uh, so we just have enough shelter for the whole, the whole group. Perfect. I mean, this, one, this is a thing you often have in your backpack, but not often use. But I mean, this will really, this is a real game changer if you're out skiing, really bad weather, stormy snowing, having a lunch break, and then you're jumping into this, and then suddenly it's warm, no wind. I mean, the, the space in this one is limited, which means that you will get it warm pretty pretty fast if you are two people in there. Great way to get to learn new people at least. Um, here's an extra pair of gloves. These ones I normally have on me when I'm a little bit of a thinner glove, uh, when I'm out ski touring. A pair of goggles. Here you also have to choose like your goggle for the prevailing conditions if you have the possibility. Um, in general, I would, if you just have one pair of goggles, I would recommend you to buy one with a lens that works in both sun and when it's a little bit of overcast and not only a lens that's made for bluebird because then it will get really dark and really hard to see if you're skiing in other conditions. This is actually a clear lens on these ones. Um, really nice ones. I, <clears throat> I use these ones from Yulbo, which you're actually able to, I don't know if you can see it, if I lean forward, you can actually pop up the, shall we see if we can do it? You can pop up the lens like this. So when you, you can have them on when you ski touring and then when it's starting to get sweaty, you can just pop them out and then when you're ready to ski down, I just take them back down. Together with a, a small like bag with a little bit of protection. Here I have my ski crampons. This, if you haven't used ski crampons before, this is really, if you have like some icy and uh, rough conditions, it's really nice with ski crampons and they will make a huge difference. They come in different uh, widths, so just have a look on which width you have on your skis. You can have a wider one if your ski is smaller, but you can't fit a smaller one on a, on a wider ski. Uh, and these are from Dynafit and fits the Dynafit bindings. So in general, when you are looking for ski crampons, you have to check which brand you have on your ski bindings and then you start, start from there. So like each, each um, ski crampon will fit a specific binding. So like these ones from Dynafit, they work for all Dynafit bindings. Um, so just have a, have a look which ones you have. These ones could be a little bit sharp. So I like to have them in a small, small bag like this. Uh, some people even fit their first aid kit. Like this. And then you can fit them around your first aid kit so you don't use so much space. I also like to have, because with ski crampons, it's all, always like that, that when you want to have them, you don't, don't want to have them down in the backpack. You want to have them like easy accessible. So I often have a, a carabiner, just a normal wire gate carabiner like that, that I have on the side of my 
on my backpack and then I can snap this one and put them on the backpack. So when I'm coming up into rain where I think, okay, hmm, now I might want to take out the ski cramp on soon, then I can just take them out, hook them onto the bag, and then it's easy for me to put them on while I'm out on the skis without taking off the, the backpack. In general for reparation and small like nice to have a headlamp i mean it doesn't have to be a big one it's just um, big enough so you have some light from it at least this is not anything you i mean this is you, so you're able to if you for example the ski tour takes longer than you expected then you have at least have some light when you're skiing down and you don't have to have this like 5,000 lumen monster light. So just, just enough to get down to the, to the car. I also have some kind of like smaller paracord-ish thingies, a strap, uh, some of these G3 ski straps, perfect to adjust broken bindings, if I have to build a rescue sled um, and all the things that can come up. Some strips like this, you see here. I also have this multi-tool with me. I like this one from, uh, it's from Gerber, a German producer and the good thing with this one is that it actually have like a small bit set to it. So I'm able to, now I have the bits I know I have normally on my bindings and for bindings in general. So then we, because otherwise you have just a couple of screwdrivers here, but now I have six extra bits to add the bindings to. Taking out everything. Around here in Sunmare, we actually have uh, like the, the um, mobile reception is limited in some places at least. So I often bring, if I'm going to terrain where I don't know that I don't have mobile reception, I use this in reach. So it's a kind of a satellite it's not a satellite phone you can't call with it but you can send text messages with it and the cool thing with this one is that you can connect it with your phone so i can use my normal iphone to send and get messages uh, and um, yeah really handy and um, perfect when we for example have ski tours like multi-day ski tours where the guys are um, staying out on a hut overnight and don't have any mobile reception then they could text us to the into the office and get a weather forecast for the coming day for example and uh, avalanche forecast uh, gps uh, to be honest i have to say i normally use the gps on my on my iphone when i'm out ski touring but uh, this is nice to have like a proper GPS if you're out for multiple days and don't, I mean, these are used by double A, normal double A batteries and easy to, easy to change. So if you're out for several days, I would really recommend you to bring a, a proper GPS. A map, so you know where you, where you are. We use, these ones from it's called Norge Serien. This is made in a material that's water repellent, so it's not the same need for having uh, this pouch for it or anything. I can just have it like it is in my in my pocket. Of course, I also have a compass with me that comes together with the, with the map. Uh, I like to have these ones with a mirror 
easy to easy to use and if I have to find the direction it's easier to to use the mirror to to align the the right uh, the right way this one also have a clinometer so you can measure the steepness which we often train on avalanche courses and when we're out in in general in these spring times it's nice to have some extra wax this is normal wax i use it on skins because it can get really sticky when you normally start down low where the snow is really wet and then you're slightly coming further and further up and the snow will get colder and colder uh, which means that the cold snow will stick to the wet skins so if you have skin wax like this then you can put it on on your on your skis and get the skins to slide a little bit better some extra energy i like these ones from cliff bar uh, in general try to avoid too much sugar and more of nuts and energy that's slower uh, sugar will give get your energy up like this but it will drop really fast too so slow energy in in general shovel most important when you show choosing your shovel it should be a metal blade plastic blade is not allowed a uh, plastic blade will break in if you're trying to dig in avalanche this one have a extendable shaft see if we can yeah there we go like that so then i can actually use it to dig with in some later videos we will go through a little bit more of avalanche equipment and what to think about when choosing avalanche equipment probe i use a probe from g3 the same brand as the, the shovel canadian brand producing really good stuff that i like have nice skis and uh, avalanche equipment some uh, tech bindings too uh, this one is 240 which will be long enough to uh, all of us to like out for recreational ski touring if you need a longer one you can use uh, that's mainly for like organized rescue uh, and the 241s are often in a nice size when they are packed together so that's important when you're buying a, a probe just try it out in your backpack so it's not sticking out of the backpack because if you get caught in avalanche it's really easy that it will fall out of the of the backpack and uh, regarding my backpack as i said i use this winter i've started using this one from arva it's called rescue 32 pro really nice backpack the thing i like with it it's it have easy the first thing is that it's nice to have on your back and then you have a zipper that goes along the whole side here so i can open up the whole backpack i have some pockets in here so i can organize my stuff have multiple ways to connect my skis on the backpack I can flip it over on the opposite side, have another zipper here, so I once again can reach into the whole backpack. For those who like camelbacks, it's a pouch for, for that too here. And you see here in the front, there's also an opening for if you have a camelback or other drinking system. In general, I like to have 
like a normal water bottle because this one won't freeze. It's really easy to refill and have a lot of advantages. And you often see that all these drinking systems sooner or later start leaking. And then you suddenly like soak wet on your back or on your clothes in general. So yeah, I don't like it. Uh, another thing I like with this backpack is that it have two pouches here on the, on the back of it where I can have the shovel blade and I can have the shaft for the shovel and the probe on the outside. That means that I can keep my avalanche gear away from the rest of my stuff. So I can open, I can pull out uh, clothes, food, whatever, without affecting my avalanche gear. And then know I have my gear in a specific place and know it's easy to um, get it in and out. Here's another thing that's good to have. Helmet. Uh, Nowadays, if you can't fit the helmet in the backpack, it's often I have like a kind of a, um, strap that you can get over the helmet, so it's connected on the on the backpack when you're walking up. Light, um, which is a, I mean a fairly important thing that it's light um, when you use it. Of course, it should be made for not only light, like climbing helmets in general are not made for skiing. This one is made for, for skiing, so you just have a look on the helmet that it's actually a one that's made for, for um, skiing. Sometimes, not often, or not always at least, we use ski crampons. Um, here's a crampon from camp. I have the speed nose on my Dynafit boots. That means I have to have this special connection in the front to get it to fit. But only in aluminium. This one is mainly made for snow and ice. I can't like climb proper ice with this one, then it will break. But easy and uh, I, I think it's important to have like a light ski cramp on if you're using it otherwise you won't take it with you and I mean that's the the main thing you have to have all the things you have with you try to find different um, things to use it for otherwise you won't I mean it should be fun to go out ski touring too and not that you have like a huge backpack with a lot of things uh, ice axe um, the same here. I like to have like a short ice axe that's easy to easy to use. This one is a Grivel AirTech in carbon, light, but still nice weight. Sometimes you have to use the ice axe to um, get out some um, some steps in the snow. And if it's icy, if the axe is too light, it's really hard to to use it, so try to find an axe that's not too light, but like nice weight in the in the top of it. I like this one at least, uh, but there are like several other good ones. Um, can you just, I don't have my poles in my backpack, of course I have them on me, but it could be nice to talk a little bit of, a little bit about poles too. Um, Often people want to have telescope poles. I use telescopic poles too, but I don't know how often I actually adjust the length of them. But it's nice to be able, it's mainly if you're coming down in a flat valley and have to skate out of it, that it could be nice with some longer poles. In general, when we ski touring, we have good grip on the skins, so we don't have any need for like cross-country skiing where we have to have long poles. If you have long poles, then you just will get really tired in your shoulders. So I try to have pretty short, short poles in general and more use them for, for balance. I was out skiing now a couple of days ago and as you can not see, you can see it, but I can see it, it's wet, the, the pole, it's water in it, snow. So could be a nice thing when you're done with the skiing for the day, 
just take apart the pole to, to dry it out. I also have this uh, slope angel um, clinometer where you can measure uh, steepness, uh, altitude and um, see um, you have a watch on it too. Uh, nice uh, gizmo if you, if you like that. Um, I will post a link to this one in, in the comments here below. And that's um, here's the other pole. Easy to easy to adjust. This one is in carbon too. A little bit lighter than than uh, aluminium. And I often think it holds actually better if it's a proper carbon pole than like aluminium that often bends instead. And um, that's actually about it, what I use in my backpack for ski touring and what I would recommend you to bring when you're coming here to ski to tour with us. Um, the only extra, extra thing we haven't talked about now is something I have underneath here and that's a pair of sunglasses, of course, if it's sunny and windy it's nice to to have some sunglasses. If you have some questions, just as I said, drop them here in the comments below and uh, we will keep posting more videos about what to bring for when you're out hiking, kayaking, climbing, all the activities you can do with us in Utegaiden. I will also in next week post a video of what to do when we are done with it. We are starting to reach the end of the ski season now and it could be nice to know what to do uh, when we are set to put the, um, the skis in the shed and be finished with the ski season. Uh, in the meantime, just subscribe to the YouTube webinar channel here to get more updates and hope to see you out in the mountains soon. Cheers for now.